So hi, this is a video solutions for the second problem in the first assessment. So if you remember, this is what the diagram looked like, where we had this little car that was falling off of a cliff. Um, we thought it might have been an amusement park ride, but pretty much it was free fall off the corner of the cliff. Now the first question asked you to superimpose on the diagram an axis that you would use to measure displacement and indicate the zero point of the axis. So I think we did this in class, but what we're going to do is just draw a line where the beginning is at zero at the top of the cliff, and then it goes down, and I indicated a positive as down to indicate the displacement of positive. So that's the x-axis, and the, meter, the m indicates that the units is meters. The next question is, let's say you're only able to measure the force of gravity to a precision of 10 meters per second square. How many significant figures is this? Now, we, we talked about this in class also, but because the 1 is by itself um, and the 0 doesn't have a decimal point after it, because the 0 doesn't have a decimal point after it, it is just one significant digit. Now, the next question has to do with um, using the equations that were given in the problems, and it says the first one we want you to do is compute the velocity of the car after 1, 2, 3, and 4 seconds. So the equation I'm going to use is that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. And now remember, the down is the positive direction. So when things are going down, we're going to be going in the positive direction. So in this case, gravity is a positive number. Usually it's not when we're doing um, a lot of physics problems, but in this case, because of the way I drew the axis, it is a positive number. So after one second, the velocity after one second is equal to the initial velocity, which is zero, because it starts right at zero to fall off the cliff, plus a, which is gravity, of 10 meters per second squared, times um, one second. So now we can see then that the velocity is uh, at one second, after one second, is 10 meters per second squared. Now we can continue this for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. And you can see that in each successive second, the speed is increasing. So that's a constant increase in velocity or a constant acceleration. And that's what the 10 is, is the constant acceleration. So these would be the values 10, 20, 30, 40 meters per second squared. Now the next one is the speed in miles per hour after four seconds. Now this is the equation we use, and this is what we got after four seconds. We got the speed of 40 meters per second squared. Now what, this is a unit conversion problem, where we want to take this meters per second squared and didn't indicate how fast is it going in miles per hour. So what, the way we do it is we set up an equivalent unit, and I, this is going to be, I probably should have written this out because it's a little bit hard to figure out, but we start with, oh shoot, it's not minus, it's plus, um, meters per second squared. And I, I know there's meters up here and seconds down here. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of the seconds, and I'm going to convert them to hours. So I indicate up here how many seconds are in one hour, so that I can cross out this second and cross out this second. And if I just stopped there, those would be meters per hour. But what I want to do is I want to also convert meters to miles. So because I want to cross out the meters, I want it down here, and I want the miles up here. So I can say that means how many, one mile is 1609 meters. So what I can now have after I cross this out, it's seconds is crossed out with seconds, meters is crossed out with meters, and I have left miles and hour. So I multiply that all out and I bring it to one significant digit and it's 90 miles per hour. The next problem then asks us to compute the displacement after one and two seconds. And I, we also have to do it after three and four seconds because we need to graph it for the problem number f. Um, so I'm using this equation where the final displacement is equal to the initial displacement plus the initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. Now in this case, we, we start at zero. So our initial velocity is going to be zero. We also start at an vo initial velocity of zero because we're just tipping right over this edge. So we're going to start right at zero. So both of these terms go to zero. So it's just going to be the, the final displacement 
is equal to 1 half the acceleration times t squared. Now remember, acceleration in this case is 10, because it has to do with gravity, but the positive direction is this way. So when we, at 1 seconds, we just put these two values at 0, 0 at the initial displacement, 0 the initial velocity, 1 half the acceleration of, of a, a acceleration of 10 times 1 squared, which is 5 meters, meters. So that's how we just went 5 meters after 1 second. Now what we're going to just plug and chug the rest of those and get all the displacement after 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds. And then F asks us to plot those on this graph. So after 1 second it's 5, 20, 45, and 80. And I've just marked off 10 um, in the increments of 10 meters on this. Now I hope that helps you when you're looking at trying to solve this problem. See you later.